Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Astra Militarum video. This one is on none other than the beautiful new Lord Solar model, the mounted commander. And as a person who has multiple Imperial Guard armies, I think I've about six or seven of them now at this point, this is the kind of guy that would lead the entire collection. He is the pinnacle, the boss of all the bosses. The model itself is actually really beautiful. It's one of my favorites, although I am not a huge fan of some of the color choices that they chose for this model. And I'm not overly sold on his base. I want this guy to feel like he stands shoulder to shoulder with the rest of his troops in the thick of the fighting, leading from the front and being a beast. Therefore, I've made some interesting changes to this miniature. And if you've watched a bunch of my videos, you know that's something I genuinely don't do. I'm a very much a open a box, build a model as it's supposed to be, paint it. I don't do a lot of changing and a lot of conversion work. It's not really my hobby. Hope you guys are excited to see what I get up to. It's mostly in the base department and on the color scheme. So I hope you guys enjoy what I do with that. Before I get to the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my current patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to have the lights on and the cameras rolling. You guys are all beasts. So thank you so much for all your continued support. If anyone is interested in joining my Patreon and are wondering why you should, all my patrons get access to a private Discord server where they communicate with me and about 140 other people on a daily basis about a cool hobby. And you get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year from the Mediocre Hobby channel to you. So if that sounds like something that interests you, check out the links below. Okay, guys, let's get into the video. Okay, so this is the main man himself, Lord Solar. Absolutely stunning miniature on his glorious horse. Obviously, I've glued all the parts to um, little individual stands to make it easier to paint, and which is really good. This is the base you get with him. I actually decided to go a little bit of a different uh, way with the base, and I will show you that at the end of the video. I think it's kind of exciting what I did. It's very different, and hopefully it will be different to what other people's Lord Solars look like. The models were sprayed black and then given a coat of gray sear just to help with the contrast. And I'm going to start off with Creed Camo and apply that to all of the armor panels on both the Steed and, of course, the Lord Solar himself. You may be asking yourself, why in God's name have you got Creed Camo out? But I want to change up this model quite a bit from the uh, standard looking one, the box art one. I know the majority of my videos, I'm pretty much straight one for one for box art. I would like to show you guys how to quickly paint them the way they're kind of supposed to be painted. Um, whereas with this guy, I didn't really go for the kind of pomp and ceremony that that model had uh, with the way he was painted. And I wanted to go with more of a kind of gruff and ready soldier. He may be an extremely high rank, but at the end of the day, he stands shoulder to shoulder with his troopers um, and fights the wars of the Imperium. So Creed Cam was applied to all the armor. He moved on to Igoros Dunes for his uh, pants and the cowl of the horse I'm trying to get as many colors um, on both of the pieces so they match each other really well sorry for the camera focus there it doesn't know where to be looking this is just a quick step all the contrast layers take a few seconds to apply this is not an ordinary horse it is mostly mechanical it's actually no real skin showing apart from maybe his ears <laughs> I certainly couldn't find any places. I went for Agro's dunes across his tail as well, just because I didn't particularly want to add in another weird color into the, the model. After that, we're gonna jump over to Wildwood. This is brown, and all we're gonna do with this is the uh, boots and some of the belts um, around his waist and his gloves. One of his gloves is on, obviously, the, the model himself. The other one is attached to the reins on the horse, so don't forget that when you're painting it up. There is just a floating hand. Yeah, so just don't miss it, which I nearly did, but we won't talk about that. As you can see, I'm trying to be a little bit careful. The uh, the reins, not reins, the stirrups that you put your feet into, that's what they're called. And they're kind of solid. There's no light through them. So you'll have to go back in with some black contrast later on to like, you know, darken down the, the gap, which is what I do with the reins. So both of the sheaths for both his sword and his pistol, um, the, are black with some gold trim so I blacked those in um, and then all of this the reins and stuff of the horse got blackened and like I said I went over the stirrups and um, fully with black 
just to darken them all down. And then when I went in with silver later on, it was a lot easier to, uh, to paint in the silver parts. And basically I want to try and block in that like negative space, the bit that's, you know, if you left it kind of messy, you would have a little bit of brown and a little bit of water. After that, we're going to move over to Blood Angel's Red Contrast, and this is for his sash and, of course, his billowing cloak. This is the one part of the model that I wanted to, to make him stand out on the battlefield, be super ostentatious. He will have this big, luxurious red cloak, making him stand out as a hero. The kind of games that I play, it will, of course, mean that he gets uh, shot at a lot more. It's basically like... A bullfighter with this thing. It's gonna be like guns trained on the billowing red cloak, but I guess it's part of his job to inspire. But yeah, contrast red all over this. Being careful when you go up over the shoulders not to hit any of the green. And then remember that there are these metal pins and clasps that hold the uh, cloak in place. So don't forget those. After that, we're gonna go over to Iron Hand Steel and paint in all of the metallic parts of the horse. Yeah, not the trim on the armor that's going to go gold but the actual horse itself that is mostly bionic at this stage we are going to go in with the iron hand steel and paint those parts in while i was messing around with the black templar i went between all basically all the servos in between all the joints i did those in black because i didn't want them to be like too metallic -y, too silver you could go with a brass and something if you wanted to but i prefer the kind of muted tone Retributor armor was then brought in for all of the trim and gold and all those filigree parts of this model. Once again, I apologize for the camera focus. It does not like focusing on this particular piece just yet. It's not fine enough. And it wants you to know that it is a small layer brush that I'm using. The camera loves for you to know that piece of information. And um, so that's what it likes to focus on. But there is quite a lot of gold detail on this miniature. And both on the horse and on the Lord Solar himself. So take your time, find them all, grab a reference picture from online if you need to, so you don't miss any of those parts, and then get it applied. If I wanted to, I could have got done these parts in silver as well, just once again to mute him down a little bit and not have him stand out and be kind of too full of pomp. But I thought the gold was quite a nice touch. He's still very proudly carrying the uh, Cadian green color scheme into battle but he still needs to be known as the Lord Solar that he is. With these bits, you want to take your time, not hit any of the green or any of the other detailed parts that we've already gotten a coat of paint on. You can see the amount of gold now. So here are both the horse and the rider with all of their base coats on. After that, we're going to go over to Seraphim Sepia and we're going to shade the entire piece with this, both the Lord Solar and the horse. This will act as a really nice shade for all those different parts. It really is just a super quick step, but it does work a treat for um, shading these parts down. After the shading was dry, and we were ready to move on it was time to layer up all of the green armored parts of this model and it was here where i came across a bit of a like an issue i didn't know where i wanted to go i knew that wild flesh is what i used to layer up the armor panels on all my cadian infantry so of course did that for the lord solar but then when it came to the horse his big flat armor panels i didn't know whether they should be painted like personal armor or like tank armor and um, in the end, I kind of went for an in-between. So what I did was, is I did indeed go for wild flesh and I did layer up all of the armor on the horse and just like it was an infantry piece. But then after that, I wanted to weather down those armor panels. Of course, that is going to draw a lot of fire. A lot of small arms fire um, is going to be, you know, kind of pinging off the flanks of the horse and his armor. So that's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go in and do a bit of the sponge work on that in a moment. But like I said, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to apply my wild flesh to all the flank armor of the, uh, the horse. I really like that kind of uh, segmented plate going along his neck. So that took to the um, wild flesh paint very, very well. and gave me a really nice result. As you can see, I'm being super careful not to get any of the green on the gold or the silver parts. It would be a slight disaster. But if you haven't seen me do the kind of stippling technique before, all it is is you take a bit of a old sponge from a case or a, an actual sponge, go down and get the dish sponge and rip off a bit without anyone noticing. And 
you basically load up the sponge with some paint. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Corvus Black and Iron Hand Steel. And then you literally just uh, apply some paint to the sponge, wipe the majority of it off and then stipple on until you get a little bit of the weathered technique. So I'm just leaving a little few spots of black. And it does look like the small chipping that would happen um, if something somebody was shooting at this thing or if it was kind of charging through the battlefield or smashing into the ranks of the enemy, there's gonna be chips in the paint. So after the black, you go onto the silver like this and do exactly the same thing. It gives a random pattern and looks really cool. After I did the sponging with the silver, I then just went in with a really fine dry brush and dry brushed all of these metallics again, including the gold. This will add a very quick highlight to all the gold and the green. As you can see, I'm making sure to hit the edges where it will be chipped. I like to think of this Lord Solar as on campaign. He has fought in 15, 20 battles in the last month or so. As you can see, I'm scraping up along that armor panel of his neck. And when this horse gets to uh, board a troop transport ship and go to the next war zone, I'm sure the uh, artisans will go at him, clean him up. All those chips and scuffs will get repainted and repaired. But in the heat of a campaign, I like to think of him getting more and more war ton as it goes on. And him looking like a little bit of a beast. Okay, jumping back to the Lord Solar where we have to be a little bit more careful. We're gonna go into Carrig Stone first. And we're gonna tidy up his trousers. It's exactly the same step that I take when it comes to the Cadian infantry. All their fatigues get done with the same color scheme. Like I said, this guy will look so sweet uh, sat in and amongst my new Cadian army. Instead of sticking out like a sore thumb. Once again, going for the uh, soft material part of the horse's head as well with the same colors, just to have him match in with his Lord, his liege, and of course the rest of the army. Fabric done on a kind of curved surface like this is great because it gives you all those natural folds. So it becomes super clear where you should highlight uh, and where you should leave alone. It's one of my favorite things. I spent a little bit of time and layered up the horse's tail with the same color as well. I know it seems kind of strange, but it just kind of, it gets that particular part painted without having to add any extra color in. After that, we're gonna go into the first of two layers on the cloak. So we're gonna start with fist on red and give it a nice solid uh, layer job, leaving all of the recesses nice and dark. So I really wanna make that, uh, that part pop. I definitely had the kind of Napoleon crossing the mountain feel with this miniature. And I wanted the big red cloak to really make that bit show and make it stand out really nicely. As you can see, I am painting in the higher parts uh, are the tops of all the folds with the red and leaving all that natural shadow and shade behind in the recesses or folds of the fabric. I know I've said it before, but it's always more important to rotate the miniature around your painting hand than rotate your painting hand around the miniature. You can see that I, 99% of the time, I'm rotating the model, not my hand, because that gives me a more comfortable grip, a steadier hand and it makes these kind of layering processes a lot easier. Now we're going in with Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm basically doing an even lighter layer again, but I just want to make this cape really pop out. I want it to be a little bit more luxurious than the fist on red, hence going in with the Evil Suns. As you can see, all I'm doing is the very tops of all the folds now. I was tempted to add some weathering, some kind of muck and dirt towards the end of the cloak to, to kind of signify that sometimes he does dismount and charge in on foot, but I decided against this. Iron Hand Steel was the paint that I used to uh, layer up all of the metallics on my Lord Solder. So that's the gold and the silver parts. If you guys are longtime followers of the channel, you know that I love layering up gold with um, a few silver highlights. It works a treat, it's super quick. And you only have to use one paint to highlight the gold and silver. So all the metallics kind of share the same final highlight. So they kind of match each other really well. Here's me going in and painting in the greaves, or stirrups. 
uh, with that silver paint. All the gold on all of those uh, pistol holster and scabbard. And of course, up the blade of the beautiful sword as well. Taking my time. Pretty as a beautiful sword. With some pretty sweet rules. This guy is definitely no slouch in combat. After that, I moved over to Blood Reaver Flesh to a layer of all the brown parts. So his uh, soft leather gloves, his boots, and the belt around his waist got done with some Blood Reaver's Flesh. And as you can see, I'm just highlighting the kind of tops, leaving the underneath nice and dark. Cadian Flesh Tone was used to highlight his face. Once again, super quick job. I forgot to record it, but I got in some he shot his bone and layered up his teeth very quickly. I don't spend an awful lot of time on faces. I tend to just do the contrast, the wash, a bit of Cadian Flesh Tone for layering it up. If I don't like the result, I just throw some Rygon Flesh Shade back over it and leave it at that. The faces on these things are tiny, um, so not a lot of attention is required. I went in with some pure white, whatever brand you so choose, and I painted in the uh, eyes of the horse. Obviously, this is a mechanical horse. Yeah, so after the white was done, I then applied some uh, Blood Angels Red Contrast over the eyes to give them that kind of glowing look. Definitely giving the horse a more metallic feel. I applied him to his horse just to see if they matched and I absolutely love the result that I've achieved thinking he looks really cool. So the only thing left to do is his base. And like I said, I wasn't sold on this base. He didn't give the kind of feels that I wanted to. So what I did is I made my own custom base that I think better uh, suits the scheme that I went for and the feel that I want to get with my Lord Solar, which is this. He is proudly standing on top uh, of a trench. There are soldiers in the trench behind him looking like uh, beasts. They're issuing orders that he is, of course, screaming and bellowing at them as he stands valiantly atop of the trench. This particular base was my Patreon video this week. So if you want to see how I did this, there's links to my Patreon below. Get involved and you can check out the video I did making this base. And that brings the, the, the building of my Lord Solar to a close. Okay, guys, and there we have it. One Lord Solar model painted up to match my Cadian color scheme and very much look like he is one of the soldiers in the army and will fight alongside them. As opposed to what I believe he looked like before, like the standard version, he looks like a propaganda piece. He looks like after the battle is done and the, what, whoever the survivors are again patched up, it's like glorious dropship comes down, they roll out this pristine soldier and mount him up on top of the biggest dead thing on the battlefield and take some snaps and make it feel like he's a big hero. Um, um, that's kind of not what I wanted my guy to feel like. So hopefully I've conveyed what I wanted to with this miniature and I hope you guys enjoyed what I did with them. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. If you have any questions about anything I did, make sure you put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Check out my Patreon with the links below. I'll see you guys in the next video.